you know, you can pre-plan for this whole thing and then it can completely change once you get a meditation, I have to say. So I could spend my 35 minutes or whatever I have just discussing what just happened. And I think it's really incredible that uh, I know for me what changed is I'm never going to turn on the news in the morning ever again. I'm going to do exactly what you did. And I think that that's a big one, to tell you the truth. Amen. How about starting your day on a happy, beautiful, wonderful note about you? I think that we just received something really spectacular. So I, I thank you for that. I'm, I'm here uh, because of two people. Andrew Martineau, my former student, swaggered into class, and I said, I'm giving you an A. He didn't even know why. But instinctively, I knew. And you know, we see the result today. President of the foundation of the library, that's whatever. Uh, the other day, someone was telling me about they want to do an event at the Broward uh, Mall. I said, well, Andrew ran that place. You know, so it's really incredible. I, I put my money on the right guy, I have to say. And both him and Evan are doing spectacular things here. And they're just, they're taking no prisoners. And it's just, you know, a warm, he's like my second son. Probably my, was my son born? <laughs> second son. Andrew's my second son, and I respect him greatly for everything that Andrew has done, is doing, continues to do, and I thank you very much. I also want to thank my fantastic patrons who got up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, you know, there were some really great people. We talk about, you know, Florida being a, uh, uh, a sunny place for shady people. <laughs> You know, and uh, you know, that, that holds true, except there are some beautiful people here as well. See, you, you started my day off on a very good note. So I have only positive things to say. Um, and when I got off the exit today, going to Davy Road, there was a woman holding a sign and she was homeless. And I thought about Evan and Evan's book, Learning to Choose. Is that a choice? How did she get there? And that completely threw me off to begin with because that is really, really important. We all make choices here. What choices did she make? We make choices every minute of every day. You chose to be here today and you're gonna get a treat for it. I could tell you that, okay? Surprise at the end. So, um, you know, that is our lives. We make choices, hopefully good ones, rather than bad ones, and we go on from there. But some of it is random. Like if we got hit by a meteor, that, you had no choice in that. It's random. So you have to take the random with the purposeful, I think, and then you go on from there. And uh, okay, so I'll start out by saying, People say, when, would you, when did you do your first work of art? And I said, well, I was two years old, and I crawled out of my crib, and I outlined my mother in lipstick. That was my first piece. <laughs> so I since retracted that, and I said, no, it was earlier than that. And they said, earlier? Earlier than two years old? I said, yes, in my mother's womb with an unfinished finger. I was drawing around with my own fluid. And I came out, and I was an artist. <laughs> and that's how it all happened. And to tell you the truth, it's interesting because my mom uh, did a drawing of me, and it said, Lawrence G. the star. And she bought me a beetle wig, which was like $4, which was like unheard of then to get something so expensive, but I, but I begged her, I wanted it, I desired it. She went to the store and got me this Beetle wig, and I had a guitar, and she drew Lawrence G. the star. And I took that with me the rest of my life. And I would go to a museum director, 
Museum of Modern Art, didn't matter. And I go, you know, my mother said I was a star. She wouldn't lie to me. And the guy would go, huh, what? Yeah, my mother said that. My mother would not be treasonous to me. She would not tell me a lie. And to this day, I'm telling you that story 60 something years later. It's true. I continue to tell the story. My mother said I was great, and I believed her. And I told everyone else that I was great, and they believed it. So it's a, it's a perpetual thing. It just keeps going on and on and on. But those are all a lot of words so far. Now the idea is to prove it. It's one thing to say anything. We know people in government that say things. It may not be true. And they have nothing to back it up with. The idea is you must back up every single thing that you say. And that's what I went on to do. So one of the things with my magazine go over here, Wired Magazine, 1994, who's on the cover? Laurie Anderson. Nice person. Lawrence Gartell on the back cover. Not only that, but the back cover of 300 million magazines over the course of 1991 to 2001. Absolute Gartell was the single most known and published ad in the history of this massive campaign. And someone once said to me, uh, Mr. Gartell, did they ever realize that the bottle was out of focus? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, if you drink enough vodka, <laughs> that's what happens. They went, that's brilliant. <laughs> and then, of course, the background, which is a piece called Moe's Ocean. It's 324 individual Polaroid SX-70s that was shown with the Museum of Modern Art I figured I would just appropriate my own work and just say, well, that's how you feel after you drink all the vodka. You feel really wavy. So this was a huge success. And people continue to, uh, to tell me about this ad. And it's still out there in the world. Uh, I brought with me the invitation to my very first exhibition. This is 1979 at New York uh, University. And I didn't even know what to call the work, video still photographs. There was no, well, there wasn't anything actually at that point, nothing. So I had to give it a name and then like, you know, looking for grants, so what category? This is, you know, photography, it's not photography. Uh, video, video, you need like a reel-to-reel. -reel. Drawing, well, not really quite the drawing. So one day I brought my work to the Brooklyn Museum and they sent me to every curator in the museum and no one knew what the work was. And uh, I have a lot of arrows in my back. But I was very determined. Why? Because my mother told me I was great. And I just kept persisting. So persistence has a lot to do with this. I'll tell you a little bit about my background. Uh, I went to the High School of Music and Art in Harlem. And from there, I went to the School of Visual Arts for painting. And then I switched to graphics. And, I, and my high school girlfriend, went to the University of Buffalo, and I said, oh my God, she's gonna meet a football player, and that'll be the end of me. So I went up there, and I went up there and followed, as I like to say, I followed love, and I couldn't get into uh, University of Buffalo, so I went to Buff State, and I was watching a Charlie Chaplin movie, Modern Times, and I was sitting there with a very long lens in the back row, and I said, I wonder if I could take a still off of a moving image. And someone taps me on the shoulder, took me by surprise, goes, we have a place here, you need to come here, and you'll work with the equipment, 
and you'll do stuff. I said, what, what will I be doing? I don't even know what I'm doing. And they said, just come, 8 o'clock, Friday night, the worst neighborhood in the world. I said, okay, so I'm stupid enough. Take my phone, my, no, no phone, I'm sorry. Take my <laughs> wallet, my camera, my car, whatever. I thought I was going to, I was, you know, being set up. But anyway, I went. And from there, I met the, uh, the video artist, Nam June Pike. And Pike was working on these experimental video systems. And I'll show you, I happen to have one in my book. I'll show you kind of what it looked like. Uh, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I'm trying to take a picture of a, st a still picture off of a moving image because I believe that painting will be replaced by electronic art. And that idea happened in 1975. 1975, I said that. And he said, you're a crazy man. And I said, wow, coming from you, that's a great compliment. My god, the, the craziest person I know just called me crazier than him. So anyway, this is a shot of, if you can see, my system that was knobs, buttons, and wires, all pre-personal computer before Steve Jobs, before Bill Gates. He was a businessman, I was an artist, hence the billion dollars between us, but that's okay. <laughs> I have a feeling I, have a, I had a lot more fun at, with stories I cannot tell in this crowd. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Uh, in 19, get my dates right, 1982, I showed my work with the Museum of Modern Art. So I was in their collection by my 25th birthday. 25 years old in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art. And they said, what is this? I said, I think it's a video drawing. I don't know really what this thing is. Perfect answer. So they took that, accepted it, 1982. In 1985, I taught Andy Warhol how to use the Amiga computer to make Debbie Harry's album cover. And I met him at Studio 54. Everyone was there. And we struck up a conversation. And then I went to his uh, factory. And I taught him how to use that machine. And so I'm going to fast forward to the fact that the director of the Luca Museum in Italy said, you know, you were the conduit from where digital art met pop art. We need to do a show. We need to do a book. So sure enough, here's the book. And I, I love this. Let me see. Andy versus Gartel. And what's really fun about this whole book is really just one little line here in the book that says, the book was blessed by the Andy Warhol Foundation. So they blessed every single picture that's in this particular book. It's a good accomplishment, I'd say. Uh, in this is 1985. In 1989, 1989, I had a show at the Joan Whitney Payson Museum in Portland, Maine. Did you ever hear of this place? Why would you? <laughs> Who goes to Maine? Except that Joan Whitney Payson, who owned the Mets, had the biggest collection you may or may not know, of Impressionism. It was the little jewel box. So there's a small painting you might or might not have heard of. It's called Van Gogh's Irises. And the irises are now at the Getty Museum. But it happened to be at the Joan Whitney Payson. And you know, when you have a museum, 
you have to take out insurance. God forbid this painting <laughs> walks away. So they have like Picassos, they have everything. It's, it's, it's incredible museum. They were paying all this insurance. So John Payson said, I don't think we're gonna keep this painting anymore. They went to auction. So they sold the irises in 1989 for $53 million. So there was an empty hole in the wall. So I had a show, and a particular, I took over the museum, but that particular hole in the wall was taken up with one of my pieces called Nouveau Japonica. It was a piece of Japanese art made on the Amiga computer that I taught Andy on. And people said, how is that even possible that that computer art, 1989, there was no such thing as a digital camera back then, by the way. There wasn't even a thing that you could like save your software. I mean, it just was, everything was just sort of coming out. The, the, the Macintosh was barely a thought back then. So in any case, that year was a very pivotal year of 1989. Why? Because I created the first digital art cover for Forbes magazine. That picture, I believe, is in this book. And they never heard of digital art before. They didn't even know what it was. Let's see. Here it is. So 1989, I had the show at the Joan Whitney Payson Museum. I, I had the cover of Forbes, and then my book, Lawrence Gartell, A Cybernetic Romance, was the first monograph on anyone's digital art ever. Gotta think about that for a minute. Does everyone have a phone? Everything you're doing is digital. Nobody knew what digital art was in 1989. So Nam June Pike wrote the introduction to my book, Lawrence Gartell, A Cybernetic Romance. No one knew what cybernetic romance even meant. Fast forward to 1997, a guy named Steve Jobs commissioned me to do a Think Different ad. They had Golda Meir, Jackie Robinson, Jim Henson, someone named Gandhi, I'm sure you've heard of that, <laughs> and myself. <laughs> so I couldn't bring every single book, but I did bring one called The World of Digital Art. Have you seen this book before? I have not seen that one before. Yeah. Well, let's open up to the forward. Who's the forward of the book? It's your friend Lawrence Gartel. That's who. <laughs> the forward to the whole entire universe of digital. Here it is. There's the art on the Amiga computer. But this was, of course, 10 years after I showed you that electronic equipment. So I was 19 years old when I started, which to this crowd sounds great. Have you seen a four-year-old play with an iPad now? <laughs> I am outbeat at this point. I mean, I got to hustle. These four-year-olds are like taking over. It's crazy. All right. Um, back to the future. You know, the whole thing is, is that you can never rest on your laurels. So in the 90s, <clears throat> I was like, I decided that I needed to make merchandise because the world was sort of coming up and learning about different kind of creative processes and how you can do things with the computer. So 
I worked with this company called Ritzenhof in Germany, and we started to manufacture glassware. So I have these like four nice coasters, and here's my beer glass. Sold in 33 countries. Well, what do you want me to do? Stay home? <laughs> so I, I brought with me my little tea tin over there. I've got a, uh, a champagne glass. Let's show you that for a minute. So, you know, this is year number. You said, what did we do last year? What did we do this year? This is number 48 for me. 48 years doing digital art. That's a long time to do anything. Let me just show you this real quick. So this is called My Little Darling and it is a tea set. Use the girl's face. And the date is on here. This is from 2009. I worked with this company for 20 years. Digital art on ceramic. There's a novel idea. With what? Under the arm. Oh, yeah, well, we'll get to that just a minute. I just want to show you that, you know. <clears throat> Gartel neckwear that was sold in Dayton, Hudson, Marshall Fields, Neiman Marcus. Know that company? So this is Energy Men. Nice image, right? It's in the Smithsonian Institute Museum of American History. Just modified for menswear. <laughs> I like it. And it's, in, my, it's uh, in one of these books, this particular image. So I was doing, I don't know, 12 different ties four times a year for the seasons. And I have a lot of ties. Consequently, <laughs> unfortunately, in Florida, we don't wear ties. But where it's cold, we do. OK. So Evan uh, mentioned something about what's on my arm. So during COVID, you know, kids were at home. So I worked with this company. I made the number one selling toy in the world called Shashibo, shape-shifting box. It's in 3,100 Walmart stores, 2,000 Target stores, 500 Barnes & Noble. It's the number one selling toy on Amazon. And then, yes, yes, wait, did you get yours there? <laughs> she did. I did. It's a lie. So it makes 70 different shapes. And uh, you can put a, uh, if you have another one, you can put one inside another one and you collect and connect, as we say. So these are $25 in, in Walmart and everywhere else, Target, wherever else. And we can't put our together in a cube. <laughs> After class, I'll help you. All right, now, of course, that, that's for everybody. That's for everybody. But then there's the special people that want a limited edition. So this is the limited edition box. And the thing about this is that when we started to, to sell these and move these, people would go, I want a refund. Why? They said, because the box is ruined. They said, no, no this is the shipping box. So then we, what we had to do is we actually had to put the box within a box because people like the box. Now, you have to know that I designed everything. The inside, the outside, whatever's here, I designed all of it. 
So what's interesting is, because of our nice Zen moment, I realize that my brain never shuts off. <laughs> While I'm sleeping, I'm not taking cleansing breaths and stuff like this. Why aren't I? So here's the box. So the box within a box, take off the sleeve, and voila, yet another box. <laughs> and then you finally open the box, and inside there is some real surprises. You get the how-to booklet, right? You get a 50-page booklet on who Lawrence Gartell is, because who knows? You get a little print of the artist as well inside. And you get a certificate of authenticity numbered. And then you see only 2,000 of these cubes were made, as opposed to the 10 million of the other ones, which I won't open it, because maybe I won't be able to put it back. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, well, I don't know about these, though, because these were like, I broke every rule. So when you do that, then there's no, like, you know, like when they show you a magic trick, they know how to, like, do it. There's no magic to this. I don't know. So, okay. Next. I can't get away from fashion ever. So I worked with this company in Sweden to make these hoodies. And if you touch the fabric of this, it's incredible. It gets sold in Harrods in London, $895. Now, hold your breath. You'd have to really feel it to understand why. So this is my cousin Clayton. And this image is when he was 22 years old. The guy is 65 now. So this image is like 40 something years old. 43 years? Yeah, 43. 43 years ago, here's the image on a brand new sweatshirt. I'm sorry if we're boring you, or you're just taking in a lot. I get it. Five minute warning. He's, he's being five minute warning. warning, I'm just getting, okay, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Let's go quick and show you, because I have to keep reinventing. So I have a whole skateboard collection that I created. This is called the Alien Board. So it's three quarter inch, uh, this is very heavy. I brought the lightest one. And the wheels light up. So this is not to be skating around, this is to hang up on your wall and tell people how cool you are. And people go, what, what is that? OK. And of course, you know, talk about iconic. The artist of the Grammy Awards. I wrapped the five-foot Grammy post, uh, a statue that was the poster, the invitation, the VI. There I am. <laughs> Poster, invitation, VIP tickets, it was everything. And now it is at the Grammy Museum on the third floor in pristine condition. You can go visit it anytime. And they moved it, they put back the plaque that needed to be there with it. So anytime you go, third floor, the actual statue. So when they first approached me, they said, we don't want like a Photoshop image. We want you to physically wrap this thing. So that's exactly what I did. It's wrapped. And in 2010, I created the first Tesla electric roadster for Tesla. I launched the company at Nikki Beach during Art Basel. And it got so much attention, it went viral to 25,000 websites, and three years later, I was the official artist of the New York International Auto Show with my own pavilion wow. of art cars and motorcycles. 
So, not resting on my laurels, and I, I guess I have five more minutes, or? I had five more minutes. When I was a kid, I always played with matchbox cars. And I said, one day, I'm gonna have my own Ferrari F430 <laughs> limited edition, only 504 of these things, $149.95. Who wouldn't want one? <laughs> We've sold 155 of them already. So this replicates, it's not I didn't make this exact car, but my second car I made after Tesla was a Ferrari F430. So that's where that comes from. So if you have an idea when you're a kid, the idea is to bring it out when you're an adult. So I am totally connected to my child spirit. That's the idea. OK, last, last thing. And then I'm going to tell you about your treat, but not resting on any laurels. Tonight, I created the official art to open the Palm Beach Fashion Couture event at the Esplanade. So I have these two pieces. I made this one, and then I said, you know, I can't stop there. This is Taylor Swift's dress, by the way, created by Bagley Mishka. And they're the sponsoring fashion show, along with Carolina Herrera tonight. Here's the second piece. So nobody's resting around here. We're busy, keep doing stuff. OK. I'm going to tell you what the treat is. The treat is this. How many people are here? A bunch. <laughs> this book is damaged. So consequently, I can't sell it. I don't, well, I could sell it for a discount, 10 bucks maybe. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice these pictures and I'm going to sign these images to the people that are here. OK? That's what I'm going to do. I, I won't, but Evan, you know, you've got to break the rules, buddy. I know you told me to watch other videos. <laughs> But other videos, they're not doing this, man. OK? Let's give a warm, a warm applause to uh, George.